Rev up your engine! Uh, Scotty, have you ever thought about starting your own auto mechanic show? School? Ethics required? Hey, that's just not auto mechanics. That's our whole society. People have no ethics these days. Look at the politicians. They have no ethics. They lie about everything and they pretend the other guy's the problem when they're all the problem. They're all corrupt politicians who are paid for by corporate money. You know, that's just the way that it goes in this country. But on the positive side for us normal people, corporations make things. They want you to buy things. So if they're really bad and everyone doesn't like them and doesn't buy their products, guess what? They'll have to change. Realize they control all the politicians out there and anybody who thinks they don't, they're living in la-la land. Check to see where all their money comes from. It doesn't matter what side they're on, they're getting corporate money up the wazoo. <laughs> That's where we need real ethics. <laughs> but our whole society kind of trickled down, you know? They were right about trickle down, why do I? The lack of ethics has trickled down to just about everybody. Darren Lincoln, considering buying a buyback SUV, 30 grand off sticker with 15,000 miles. Lincoln Navigator, 2019, comes with all the history and the fix. Terrible idea? Yeah, it's a terrible idea. They had to buy the thing back, you know? And especially if it's one of those that has those 10-speed automatic transmissions, they still aren't fixing them right. It was a bad design, has a lot of flaws in it. Now, Never, ever buy a buyback vehicle. Just like never, ever buy an auction vehicle unless you're a pro. They're at an auction because they have problems and they're not worth much. Now, if you're a pro and you know how to fix them and you're not going to keep the car, a lot of guys do that. They'll buy five auction cars for six, seven thousand dollars total. They'll sell each one for four to five and they'll fix them as cheap as they can and sell them to somebody. They're not keeping them themselves. Don't buy an auction car either. Jeff Steen says, 2015 Toyota Corolla S. What's up with the touchscreen radios having issues? Unfortunately, they make all that crap too high tech. And then, wham, they got problems. Understand one thing. Toyota does not make those touchscreen radios. They buy them from some other company. All the Japanese companies, ages ago, they're into building things as efficiently as possible and not centralizing everything. So they got a factory where things are built. Parts come from all over the place. So even Toyota, they got Nip and Denso parts on them. They have all kinds of different companies' parts on them. And that's not there. So whoever made that touchscreen for them, they messed up. And that's how it goes. That's why I tell people, if you want fancy stuff in your car, buy the cheapest car. Put the stuff in yourself. You can get aftermarket touchscreen radios work fantastic for a couple hundred bucks. Why pay, you know, $1,500 premium at the dealer? Buy it with no radio at all. Put your own in. That's what I always do. Brazilian x -Skilt says, Scotty, I got an 09 Honda Accord with a new starter, a new battery, but it struggles to turn over in a cold. Is it time to trade it in? You know, let's say you got a good starter. It's probably rebuilt. Sometimes they're crap. Good battery, have it tested. Check the wiring, make sure it's clean and there's no dirty connections. If so, and it still does it, probably is time for a new car because motors wear out. And as cars get really old, they're hard to start. They have to crank a long time. I used to have cars like that when I was a kid, but I mean, I paid three, four hundred bucks for the cars and drove them 10 years. And they would be hard to start as they aged, but I didn't care. I'd afford like that. I just kept putting starters on it when they would burn out from spinning too much. If it has a good starter that's brand new and the wiring's all good, yeah, get another car. It's not worth rebuilding an engine on that thing. Chai H says, Scotty, what's the best 5W full synthetic oil and oil filter? In the United States, States. All oils are tested by API, the American Petroleum Institute. It grades them all. As long as they have their high grade, doesn't matter which one you buy. They're all well made. Well, by price, that's what I do you know, when I'm buying them for customers' cars. And as for oil filters, buy the top end oil filters. They have synthetic filaments in them. They last longer. Pretty much all the high end ones are the same. Take like Penn's oil and Mobile One. I believe both of their high end filters are made by Fram. Penn's oil. And mobile one, mobile oil companies. They don't make oil filters. They buy them from somebody else. And the last time I checked, they both bought them from Fram. So if you can buy the high quality Fram one cheaper, buy that. It's the same filter. As <laughs> long as you get the quality ones, they're all pretty well made. Darren Lincoln says, Scotty, my 19,000 mile Sienna is sweating out of the power steering line. Just enough to make it oily, no drips. The garage says I need to replace all the hoses. Do I? Pfft. 
you only got 19,000 miles and it's just sweating a little and you don't see any loss you don't have to keep adding fluid in it it stays pretty much at the full line don't waste your money when they're bad they'll leak you lose fluid the pump will start to groan then you time to change them it might go in through the hoses that's called osmosis sometimes they'll do a little bit of osmosis if you're not adding fluid don't even worry about it why waste your money they're well made hoses and 19,000 miles it should last a lot longer than that Daniel Bitnet says, are Bilsteins really the best shocks? Well, they are very high quality shocks. There's no arguing that. If you don't mind paying the extra price for Bilstein shocks and they make them for your vehicle, go right ahead. They're excellent shocks. They're well made. Now, a lot of times, you don't need them that expensive. If you got a BMW or something and you really drive like a maniac, go right ahead. But if you got a Toyota or a Ford or something, eh, the regular shocks work perfectly good and they cost a lot less. They are good for performance though. They're well-made ones. James Self says, Scotty, what is a good coolant overall? You want to get the coolant made for your car. That said, there's only really three types of coolants. There's the old green coolant. Then there is the oat coolant, organic acid technology. Then there is the hot coolant, H-O-A-T, hybrid organic acid technology. The hot is the best coolant that costs the most. Companies like Toyota's all use a hot coolant now. It's pink or red. It's just a dye. The color doesn't mean anything. It's just a dye that they use. As long as you use a hot coolant of Toyota, it's fine. It doesn't matter if Toyota makes it. Toyota actually doesn't make them anyways. Somebody else makes it for them and they're rebranded. If another company makes a hot coolant, you can use that. If yours came with an oat coolant, like a late model Ford, use an oat coolant. You can still use the hot coolant. It is better, but you'd have to fly all the old coolant out and then put the hot coolant in place of it. So, you know, and, and well, it doesn't matter who makes them. They're all regulated in the United States. If you find you have a hot coolant and it's $30 a gallon and you can get it for 15 at AutoZone, who cares who makes it? They're all regulated by how they make them anyways and what chemicals are in them. Well, G says, what do you think of those Panther Crown Victorious to buy now? They were solid built vehicles. There's no arguing that. Very solid built vehicles. They have a solid frame. They're okay on the highway. You can get in the mid-20s gas mileage on them. They're kind of gas hoggy in town. They don't make them anymore because times are changing. They don't want to make cars. They want to make SUVs and trucks. That's where profit is. So they're no longer making them. But they were excellent cars. If you can find a good used one, willing to go low gas mileage in town, maybe driving the highway all the time. They're, you know, they're, they're nice cars. Don't overpay because, you know, they're older cars. They don't make them anymore, but they're still well made. All right, so Scotty, is the skid plate really necessary? They're a pain to remove every time you change the fluid text. Originally, if you're talking about the plastic crap under there, that's to make the car more aerodynamic so they get higher gas mileage ratings. And that's why they put it on. Now, on the other hand, if you have a real skid plate that's made out of metal and thick and bolted on, that's to keep you from bottoming the car out. If you have a low car, you want to leave that skid plate because you would rather hit the skid plate than smash the oil pan and ruin your engine. Realize that. You don't want to take it off of a vehicle that's low. But if you got one that's high up in there, you got one of those plastic crampers, go ahead and take it off if you want it. It just makes them somewhat more aerodynamic, you know. And of course, you've got a real Ooh, fancy car that does 200 miles an hour. It actually helps it go better because it sucks the car down to the ground and gives it a ground force. It's actually part of the aerodynamics of holding it on the ground. So if you got, you know, $350,000 car, go ahead. Leave it on if you want to drive that fast. Soccer Lad 548 says, Scotty, what would you use to clean oxygen sensors? Well, you know, you kind of waste your time trying to clean them. They measure residual oxygen in your exhaust system. They get really hot. And if they get corroded with stuff, it probably ruins them more than any cleaner is going to do. They're already getting red hot, which will clean a lot of the impurities off of them. And when they go bad, generally you got to replace them. You know, if you want to try my old trick of lacquer thinner in the gas tank to clean the fuel injectors and the catalytic converter and oxygen sensors, you can try it. But it works a lot better on the catalytic converters than it does on the sensors themselves because it passes through the catalytic converter, but it just goes around the oxygen sensor. So it really doesn't affect it all that much. Mode Zayad says, Scotty, what's the worst Toyota to buy? used. Okay, by far it's a hybrid one. You don't want to buy any car particularly hybrid because they're very expensive to repair. I had a customer the other day, he had a Toyota Highlander hybrid, right? Before he had that, he had a regular Toyota Highlander. He got 450,000 miles before he sold it. Still engine transmission, original. This one had like 150. The electronic rear differential that made it the hybrid part broke and it was going to be over $3,000 to fix it. So he's selling the car. If it was not a hybrid, 
He wouldn't have gotten rid of it. He told me, he said, I'm never buying another hybrid car. He loves the Toyotas, but he'll never buy another hybrid car. And I don't blame him. You can buy them new, but buying them used, big gamble there. And he lost with his gamble. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.